Sometimes a grammar may produce more than one parse tree for the same or all of the strings it generates. When this happens, we say that the grammar is ambiguous. Let us see the formal definition of the grammar. A grammar is ambiguous if and only if there is at least one string in the language L of G for which G produces more than one parse tree. If the grammar produces more than one parse tree for a given string of that particular language, then that grammar is called as ambiguous grammar. Let us take some examples of ambiguous grammar. In the previous session, we have written the context free grammar for balancing the parenthesis, where the set of rules written are S tends to epsilon, S tends to S S and S tends to opening parenthesis, S closing parenthesis. This grammar already we have written. Now, consider the string opening opening closing closing opening closing parenthesis string and the leftmost derivation for this string is applying by using these rule 1, 2 and 3 S tends to S S by rule 2 and there are two non terminals in this derivation. The first leftmost non terminal is S which is replaced by rule 3. Yes, replaced as opening parenthesis, yes, closing parenthesis. So, again there are two non terminals. So, the leftmost non terminal is this yes, again replaced as yes, opening parenthesis, yes, closing parenthesis. And next, this yes is replaced as epsilon. By now, we are left with only one non terminal. This non terminal replaced as opening parenthesis, yes, closing parenthesis, and yes tends to epsilon. So, by one leftmost derivation, we have derived this string. Next, we will go for another leftmost derivation for the same string starting from S S, we obtain the given string. Once we obtain two leftmost derivations for the same string, the parse tree for the first leftmost derivation looks like this, where S tends to S S this S is replaced as opening parenthesis, yes, closing parenthesis. Again, this S is replaced as opening parenthesis, yes, closing parenthesis and S tends to epsilon. And the last S is replaced by opening parenthesis, yes, closing parenthesis and S tends to epsilon. When you read the leaf nodes from left to right, we obtain the string opening parenthesis, opening parenthesis, closing, closing opening and closing. So, this is the parse tree obtained for the first leftmost derivation. So, the sec for the second leftmost derivation, the parse tree obtained looks like this, where S tends to S, S, then first S as epsilon. So, this S as epsilon. Next, S tends to opening parenthesis, S closing parenthesis. Again, S tends to opening parenthesis, S closing parenthesis, S tends to epsilon. Similarly, S tends to opening parenthesis, yes, closing parenthesis, yes tends to epsilon. If you read from right to left, opening, sorry, left to right, opening, opening, closing, closing, opening, closing. So, these are the two parse trees obtained from these two leftmost derivations. When you go for, so these are the two leftmost derivations. When you go for comparing these two derivations, are they same or different? Yes, they are different. So, since both the parse trees obtained for the same string are different, the grammar is ambiguous. So, this is one example wherein we have seen left two leftmost derivations deriving uh, two parse trees which are different and leading to ambiguity. One more example for which already we have written the grammar and the leftmost and rightmost derivations. So, this is the grammar S tends to I C T S, I C T S E S X, C tends to Y and the leftmost derivation for the string I Y T, I Y T X E S is this derivation. And now what we will do is for this example, we will take one leftmost derivation and one rightmost derivation for the same string. Now, if you see for the leftmost derivation, this is the parse tree obtained S derives I C T S, S derives I C T S. 
T s and here we have two non terminals C and S since it is leftmost derivation C is replaced by y. So, C is replaced by y and now in this derivation working string we have only one non terminal s which is replaced as i c t s e s. So, s is replaced as i c t s e s. Then this c as y, this c as y, then the next derivation s as x, s as x and in the next derivation s as x, s as x. If you read from left to right or the leaf nodes i y t i y t s x e x is a string derived and this is a parse tree obtained from this leftmost derivation. The same for the rightmost derivation for the same string. So, this is the parse tree obtained where s derives i c t s e s i c t s e s and here rightmost means we have c s s 3 non terminals among these 3 non terminals which is the rightmost non terminal. So, this is the rightmost non terminal replaced as x. So, s is replaced as x. Now, we are left with c and s. Among c and s which is the rightmost non terminal this s. So, now what we do? This s is replaced as i c t s. So, this s is replaced as i c t s. Now, you see here we have 3 non terminals c, c and s. Among these three rightmost is this s, yes. s yes is replaced as x. Next time c is replaced as y and next time c is replaced as y. Reading from left to right from the parse tree i y t i y t x e x is a string derived and this is the parse tree obtained from this rightmost derivation. So, this is the parse tree obtained from the leftmost derivation this is a parse tree obtained from the rightmost derivation. Now, are these two parse trees different or same? Yes, both the parse trees are different. When two parse trees are different for the given same string, then the grammar is ambiguous. And see here, we have derived the parse tree from one leftmost derivation and the other by rightmost derivation. We will see one more example, wherein we will go for two rightmost derivations for the same string A A B. So, for the string A A B, you have rules S tends to A B, S tends to A A B, A tends to A, A tends to A A, B tends to B. So, I will apply S tends to A B rule. Rightmost means this B is replaced by terminal B then A as A A and then A as A. So, the string obtained is A A B. Similarly, another rightmost derivation for the same string A A B, yes derives, I will go for applying the second rule A A B, where this B is replaced as B, I will get A A B in two derivations. So, when I go for putting the parse tree for both the derivations, so this is the parse tree obtained for the rightmost derivation. S yes, tends to A B, B is replaced as B, A as A A and again A as A. So, left to right A A B is a string and this is a parse tree obtained for this rightmost derivation and this is a parse tree obtained for this rightmost derivation where S yes, tends to A A B and this B tends to B. When you compare these two their parse trees, are they same? No, both are different. So, again since both the parse trees are different for the same string A A B, then the grammar is ambiguous and here remember we have obtained these two parse trees from two rightmost derivations. So, we have discussed here three examples. Example 1 wherein given a grammar we have obtained two leftmost derivations. For both the two leftmost derivations, we have a po we have put parse trees and then when you compare both the parse trees, both the parse trees are different hence the grammar is ambiguous. Second example, we took one leftmost derivation and one rightmost derivation, then we have put the parse tree and then we proved that the grammar is ambiguous. And in the last example, third example, we have taken two rightmost derivations, we have put the parse tree for them 
and when you see both the parts trees are different. So, it means what? Given a grammar for a given string, if I want to prove that the grammar is ambiguous, how we can prove? Given a grammar, pick a string, see and obtain two derivations for that string. It can be two leftmost or two rightmost or one left, one right. Once we obtain the derivations, put the parse trees for them. If both the parse trees are different, then the grammar is ambiguous. So, by now we came to know what do you mean by ambiguous grammar and how do you prove that the given grammar is ambiguous. Now, question is why we are discussing the ambiguity of the grammar over here? Is there any problem? If so, what it is? Why is ambiguity a problem? When we discuss regular languages, with regular languages, for most applications, we do not care about assigning internal structure to the strings. Whereas, with the context free languages, we usually do care about internal structure because given a string w, we want to assign meaning to w. So, it is generally difficult, if not impossible, to assign a unique meaning without unique parse tree. So, an ambiguous grammar which fails to produce a unique parse tree is a problem. So, let us take up an example wherein the ambiguous grammar creates a problem. We have discussed the arithmetic expression example while writing the context free grammar. The grammar for arithmetic expression g is equals to v summation r e where v is addition, multiplication, opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, i d represents for identifier, e represents expression. Summation is plus addition, multiplication, opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis and i d and the rules are e tends to e plus e, e tends to e into e, e tends to in parenthesis e and e tends to i d. So, let us quickly look at obtain two derivations, put the parts and prove that the grammar is ambiguous and that ambiguous grammar leads to a problem. So, what is the grammar written for the arithmetic expression e tends to e plus e expression plus expression or e tends to e into e expression into expression e tends to in parenthesis expression and e tends to i d. So, this is the grammar. Now, consider the string i d plus i d into i d is a string which we are supposed to derive. Now, we will go for one leftmost derivation for which we will start with e tends to e derives. I will apply the first rule e plus e. Since this is the leftmost derivation, so the leftmost non-terminal is which one? e. This e is replaced as by rule 4 i d plus e. Now, there is only one non-terminal which will be replaced by rule 2 as i d plus this e is replaced as e into e. Now, i d plus as it is in these two non terminals leftmost is e, e is replaced as i d and the next time i d plus i d into e is replaced as i d. So, this is one leftmost derivation. We will put one more derivation that is rightmost derivation. So, we will take e derives we will start with some other second rule e into e and now since this is rightmost derivation rightmost non terminal is e this e is replaced as i d next i am left with only one e so this e is replaced as e plus e this into i d as it is next 
rightmost non terminal is E. So, E plus E is replaced as I D okay, into I D. Next, last this E is replaced as I D plus I D into I D. So, now we have obtained one leftmost derivation for the string and for the same string we have obtained the rightmost derivation. Now, if we put the parse tree for both the derivations, left do, left most derivation E tends to E plus E. This E is replaced as I D. Next time this E is replaced as E plus E. Next time this E is replaced as I D, this E is replaced as I D. So, this is the parse tree obtained from this leftmost derivation. Now, check the parse tree obtained from this rightmost derivation. What is this? E derives E into E, E into E, E is replaced as I D. Next time this E is replaced as E plus E. So, this E is replaced as E plus E. Next time rightmost E is replaced as I D. Next time this E is replaced as I D. If you read from left to right I D plus I D into I D, I D plus I D into I D. So, we have obtained the pores, two parse trees. Are both the parse trees same? No, it means what? The grammar is ambiguous. Yes, this grammar is ambiguous. Now, consider I will take this I D plus I D into I D as 2 plus 3 into 5, 2 plus 3 into 5, 2 plus 3 into 5. Now, if I go for evaluating this expression, then what I will get? First 3 into 5, 3 into 5 plus 2, I will get how much? 17. Next, if I go for this parse tree, first 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 into 5 is 25. So, my question is whether this expression must be evaluated as 17 or it must be evaluated as 25. So, this is the problem when we see the grammar is ambiguous. So, here we have one leftmost derivation what we discussed just now and one rightmost derivation okay. and then the parse trees for them. So, the question is whether the evaluation must be 17 or it must be 25. So, the designers of practical languages must be careful that they create languages for which they can write unambiguous grammars.